Chinese rare earth exports to the U.S. soar by 660%. Why the rare earth reversal? On August 12, 2025, both China and the U.S. made a major announcement. China would temporarily suspend its rare earth export controls for 90 days on 28 U.S. companies, while the U.S. would simultaneously halt a 24% tariff increase on Chinese goods. Just three months earlier, the U.S. had been a vocal proponent of completely breaking free from Chinese rare earth dependence. However, Chinese customs data delivered a swift reality check. In June, exports of rare earth magnets to the U.S. skyrocketed by 660%, as a backlog of 2,000 tons of orders flooded into Western markets. What's going on? At a time when the world is calling for decoupling from China, why are rare earth orders growing instead? Let's pull back the curtain and dive into this complex rare earth resource struggle. Amid the global supply chain reshuffling, China is using precision irrigation to cleverly control the lifeline of the world's rare earth supply. Western countries have poured enormous sums of money and spent a decade trying to reduce their reliance on Chinese rare earths, but they have consistently failed. With Tesla's robots about to enter mass production, Demand for rare earths is poised for a new surge, and a new storm is quietly brewing. The lifeline orders and the hidden leverage. The surge in exports in June was no accident. Chinese customs data shows that single-month rare earth magnet exports to the U.S. shot up to 352.8 tons, a 660% increase from May. This was a direct result of the temporary rare earth agreement reached between the two countries in June where China promised to prioritize existing orders, boosting the efficiency of export license approvals by 90%. Even more cunning is China's differentiated treatment. German automakers like Volkswagen and BMW quickly received the magnets they desperately needed, while the samarium cobalt magnets for Lockheed Martin's missiles remain on the export control list. This case-by-case -case strategy has had an immediate effect. From mining to magnet production, China controls 90% of the world's refining capacity for heavy rare earths. While the U.S. company MP Materials received a $400 million investment from the Pentagon, its magnet scrap rate remains as high as 40%. Meanwhile, Chinese companies have long achieved ultra-high purity separation technology of 99.999%. As one rare earth trader put it, This isn't dumping. It's an overt strategy. By controlling how much and to whom we sell, China is turning resource leverage into a strategic asset. This rare earth trade showdown is a textbook example of modern economic warfare, with strategic implications on par with ancient supply line battles. Against a backdrop of a global supply chain crisis caused by geopolitical instability, China is employing a nuanced export strategy to build a precise resource control network. On one hand, it maintains stable supplies for civilian sectors like new energy vehicles and consumer electronics. This rare earth lifeline helps ease international anxieties over supply shortages and quietly integrates industry giants like Tesla and Siemens into long-term partnerships. On the other hand, it imposes strict export controls on cutting-edge materials for core military equipment, acting as a hidden gate on a strategic choke point. This forces the rare earth-dependent Western military-industrial complex to confront its own production bottlenecks. This tough on one hand, flexible on the other. Approach avoids triggering WDO disputes while using market leverage to subtly reshape the global industrial landscape. According to the International Institute for Strategic Studies, if the West wants to rebuild a full rare earth supply chain from mining to refining and deep processing, it would require a massive $300 billion investment and a decade-long time commitment. China, with its absolute advantage of controlling over 70% of the world's refined rare earth capacity, can simply adjust export quotas and product lists to create a ripple effect across critical sectors like new energy, semiconductors, and defense. This silent battle is a multidimensional contest of technological barriers, rule-making power, and established networks, revealing that 21st century resource struggles have gone far beyond simple supply and demand, evolving into a deep showdown of national strategic intelligence and industrial resilience.
The Cost of the Western Counterattack In response to the rare earth bottleneck, the U.S. initiated a whole-of-government mobilization. The Pentagon invested a hefty $400 million to acquire a 15% stake in MP Materials, and the Biden administration pressured Apple into a $500 million procurement deal. The U.S. also rallied Japan, India, and Australia for the Quad Critical Minerals Initiative and prepared the Critical Minerals Act, which would require the U.S. to reduce its dependence on Chinese rare earths to below 30% by 2027. This sounds ambitious, but the reality is harsh. The Kangankun project in Malawi is touted as a low-cost model, with a mining cost of just $2.92 per kilogram, yet its operational cost is still 2.3 times that of Chinese projects. The U.S.'s own recycling efforts are even more dire, with the cost of extracting rare earths from old phones reaching as high as $380 per kilogram, more than 10 times the import price from China. Even South Africa's Falaborwa project, set to start production in 2026, will have to process 2.2 million tons of slag just to produce 26 tons of magnet raw material, which isn't even enough for a fraction of Tesla's robots. No wonder the U.S. Department of Energy admitted that. Building a domestic supply chain will take at least a decade. The Western counterattack is more like a tragic spending spree. From the U.S. allocating $2.5 billion in 2021 under the Defense Production Act to support domestic rare earth projects, to the EU spending tens of billions of euros to create a critical raw materials alliance. These seemingly powerful policy measures are nothing more than a desperate struggle against market realities. They seem to have forgotten that the rare earth industry isn't a game where capital can buy a quick win. The extraction of dysprosium oxide requires overcoming the technical barriers of separating 17 different rare earth elements, and producing neodymium iron boron magnets involves hundreds of precise processing steps. Breakthroughs in these core technologies require decades of data accumulation and process refinement. The rare earth industrial system that China has built over 30 years is a modern industrial miracle. From the open pit mine in Bayan Obio, Inner Mongolia, to the ionic rare earth extraction in Ganjo, from the smelting and separation base in Baotou to the magnetic materials industrial park in Ningbo, China has formed the world's only closed-loop ecosystem covering the entire rare earth value chain. In contrast, after restarting its mountain pass mine, the U.S. still has to ship its concentrate across the ocean to China for processing due to a lack of downstream infrastructure. Australia's Linus company spends over $10 million a year to handle smelting waste but has been unable to break through environmental processing bottlenecks, the resource curtain of the robot age. Just as traditional industries are catching their breath, a new storm is brewing. Tesla's Optimus humanoid robot production plan has been revealed, with each unit requiring 2 to 5 kilograms of neodymium iron boron magnets. Industry forecasts predict a 300% surge in global demand by 2026, and Chinese companies have already secured 90% of the advance orders. This means that whoever controls rare earths holds the key to the robot age. Tesla's robot plan is like a giant stone thrown into a calm lake, pushing the rare earth competition to new heights. This competition has long surpassed the traditional realm of resource struggles and has evolved into a fierce battle for technological standards and environmental rulemaking power. In the past, China was in a passive position of simply selling resources in the rare earth field, maintaining market share through extensive extraction and low-cost exports, but remained at the low end of the global value chain. Now, China has completed a magnificent transformation from selling resources, to setting the rules, precisely grasping the key lifeline of global industrial upgrading, the rare earth struggle is far from over. This recent, tactical detente between the US and China is like putting an oxygen mask on the global supply chain, but everyone knows it's only temporary. When Tesla's robots hit the assembly line and F-35 fighter jets need their engine magnets replaced, the resource curtain could fall at any time. Do you think the West can truly break its dependence on Chinese rare earths within a decade? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments section. Thanks for reading, and we'll see you next time.